بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم and welcome back to your communication skills class again today we will again solve some activities as we did in the listening activities today we are going to help ourselves develop our reading activities out of the language activities that we are doing we are in a process of doing our receptive skills first of all that we are keep on receiving the information through listening and then through reading uh, our main focus is to improve our receptive skills so that we can work on our productive skills more. For every productive skill, we will also come across some of the activities as well as we will do them in detail, a longer detail as compared to we are doing the listening skills and the reading skills in detail because uh, uh, productive skills are those skills which require a lot of time for practice. However, uh, receptive skills are those uh, for which you would uh, keep on practicing them daily as I am I'm posting uh, different different links to you uh, on, the daily, on the daily basis. So to begin with, let's quickly summarize the previous lecture and let's quickly see that what we have done in our previous lecture. And basically, uh, in the last lecture, we have thoroughly discussed uh, that how uh, you can actually uh, develop your reading skills uh, and we also discussed some types of reading. Uh, uh, in the beginning, we also discussed that what exactly reading is and what it involves. Uh, so basically, we begin with uh, uh, how, uh, what exactly reading involves is a reader a text uh, it uh, adds the fluency and strategy we try to differentiate between strategies and fluency uh, thoroughly and we have also seen that how uh, you can help yourself develop your reading skills uh, we uh, discuss the tips for improving and enhancing your reading now uh, we discuss this great thing that how uh, this fluent reading uh, doesn't mean that uh, it is a reading with high rate it actually means that you are reading with one accurate speed with understanding now your understanding is really very important once you talk about reading uh, with um, uh, understanding understanding or reading with comprehension. Uh, we discussed different types of readings, uh, scan, uh, scanning, skimming, uh, main, reading for the main idea, reading for the purpose and so on and so forth. So uh, there are a lot of things that we have discussed in the previous lecture. We also solved one activity. We also try to help ourselves uh, practice one activity that was uh, a big city noise where we came across one of the uh, paragraphs uh, being taken and then we try to answer some of the questions related to that very paragraph. So uh, today we are again going to solve some activities that are going to help you develop your reading skills. So first of all, let's quickly see that what uh, is the reading comprehension. So to do so, uh, re uh, let's read from the slide. Uh, reading comprehension is understanding a written text. So comprehension basically means that you are trying to understand and you are trying to interpret something that has been said or something that has been written. Now, it is basically where it has something to talk about extracting the required information from it uh, as efficiently as possible. So it also, in other words, it also includes the fluency. Now this fluency basically has something to do with the fluency of the ideas being coming into your mind and then you are transforming those ideas uh, and then you are providing your feedback. Uh, you are providing your feedback that can be one sided feedback or that can be two sided once you are trying to read uh, maybe from the board, maybe you are reading from the banner, maybe you are uh, coming across different kinds of things uh, where you are reading from. So uh, this fluency um, uh, comes once you are extracting the idea or you are extracting the information through skimming, through scanning, uh, maybe you are reading for the main idea, maybe this is extensive reading or maybe that is intensive reading. So uh, these are all ideas which uh, basically come under the heading of reading comprehension. So uh, you see a huge list of that what do we read and we read a lot of things and there are a lot of bullets on this very uh, slide that you can see. You read novels, you read short stories, tales, essays, diaries, anecdotes, biographies, poems, limericks, nursery rhymes, letters, postcards, telegrams, notes, newspapers, magazines. Uh, so all of these kind of material. Uh, sometimes you read reports, reviews, summaries, pamphlets, handouts, textbooks, guidebooks, recipes, advertisements, travel brochure, catalogs, puzzles, problems, games, rules. 
instructions, directions, notices, rules and regulations, posters, signs, forms, graffiti, menus, price lists, tickets, comic strips, cartoon and caricatures, legends, maps, statistics, diagrams, flow charts, pie charts, timetables, telephone dictionaries, uh, Facebook dictionaries and there are so many more that you would come across that you are reading from. Uh, so uh, sometimes you read people's face also. So this is one of another type of reading uh, that you would come across while you are practicing and while you are trying to enhance your reading skills. So uh, what do you read uh, is uh, has got the variety but how you read it is really very important and that needs or a lot of understanding. Uh, think of other things that you read every day. Uh, maybe you are uh, right now you are reading a DVD or maybe you are as uh, reading a CD. So this is how you keep on reading different things. Now there are two main reasons of reading. As I said that you read a lot of material but there are reasons for reading and there should be one purpose of reading. One uh, bas basic reason for reading is reading for player and the second uh, example is reading for information. Now you're reading for player, you can read rhymes, you can read novels, you can read stories, you can read for fun, maybe you are looking at any brochure, you are reading that out. This is what you are doing, reading for player, reading for entertainment. Uh, you are reading uh, from the book of nursery rhymes for your kid, uh, for your children, and that is reading for player. You are reading from a novel, you are reading from a short story to get entertained. Uh, this is again reading uh, for player. However, reading for information, like for example, you are reading a newspaper for information to find out something and to do something with the information you get. So sometimes you are conducting a research. So it goes into a more technical side once you talk about that you are reading for information. So there are people who already have the knowledge about something but they keep on reading from other sources and other material to get more information. And sometimes they find player in books so they try to you know read from dif different books because since books are their best friends and since this material is their uh, very good friend so they keep on reading from different material to material so these are the two main main reasons for reading uh, from uh, different uh, uh, things now uh, there are a lot of things that you read but how you read is uh, the basic thing that we are going to talk about in today's lecture. The main ways of reading are as we have also discussed in the previous lecture skimming for which I have also given you some examples quickly running one's eye over the text. So you are skimming through the text uh, to find out maybe uh, you are uh, trying to find out the um, uh, hotel's address maybe looking uh, for a name in the phone book scanning again quickly going through a text to find specific or the focused information now you have focus on something maybe you are looking for the main idea of the whole uh, paragraph so you are scanning through the text there is one kind of uh, reading that is known as extensive reading like for example reading the long texts like for example reading for player uh, now you are reading for player some kind of a novel that carries a lot of information and you are sitting down your spare time and this is known as your extensive reading and uh, there is another kind of reading that is known as intensive reading which is reading short text to extract information uh, like reading for detail so you are looking for the information that is related and that is relevant to, uh, that is known as your intensive reading that you are looking for the focused relevant material that is the focused or uh, reading for the detail to elaborate your understanding. Skills involved in reading. Now there are some skills which are basically involved once you are involved in a reading process. Uh, the first uh, skill is of the recognition. Now this recognition has something to do with sound, alphabet, or in other words you can call it letter and they uh, combine together to give you a word and words they combine together to give you phrases, clauses and then sentences. Now this recognition basically uh, starts with your recognition of the smallest sound unit in any language that can be if you talk about English that can be A, B, C, D, E and many more and if you talk about Urdu language it can be Aleph, Be, Pe, Te, Te, 
and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of variations from language to language. However, this particular sound has been attached to one particular alphabet or one particular letter. Now they have been attached to and they've been assigned to one particular letter that reveals that you uh, pronounce them in the same way. So this recognition of sounds uh, once they are combined together to form words, uh, you recognize the word quitty. And then you uh, associate that word with a particular thing uh, that you know of. If you are talking about a table, of course, uh, um, uh, a sketch will come in your mind that the table looks like this. If you are talking about a chair, a sketch will come in your mind that the chair looks like this. So this is how, this is the recognition uh, of once you are reading uh, from the book or once you are reading from any piece of material or any piece of information that is there in front of you, you try to associate uh, uh, those uh, sounds with the word by recognizing them and how do you recognize them this is something abstract this is an abstract idea where uh, you cannot or where you are sure um, that uh, the things have been already attributed or the sounds have been already attributed to a few things now uh, it was not written anywhere that the chair has to look like this it has to have four legs and it has to have a slab on it where you are supposed to sit down and uh, this is uh, what and this is how a chair is supposed to be like but the image that has been built or that has been created in our minds look li looks like this. So this is what you call recognition. Then once you recognize the words and you associate them with a particular thing, you understand the information. Now you understand the information through sentences, uh, how the sentences have been presented. Now your subject is to be followed by a verb and then your object. Now the simple sentence structure looks like this. Now uh, you are sure that who is the subject of this sentence and who is the object of this sentence and what exactly exactly they are doing so this is how you try to you know uh, understand the information that what exactly is going on then you try to interpret that you know this interpretation has something to do with your mind stimuli your uh, senses now all your five senses are involved once you are trying to you know remember and once you are trying to interpret the message now how do you interpret uh, you say something is hot you would touch that now uh, the uh, message would go to your mind that this thing might be hot and you are trying to touch the cup of coffee or maybe the cup of tea so you are being careful now who is telling that you are interpreting it through your senses now your senses are telling it that this is right this is wrong and so on and so forth then again talking about uh, the next thing that is uh, transcoding information uh, now there is a term that is known as encoding and there is uh, another term that is known as decoding. Now, if you remember, we have thoroughly discussed them in the previous lectures as well. Encoding something has something to do with taking in the information and decoding has something to do with cracking down the information. Now, this transcoding has something to do with taking, cracking, taking, cracking, taking, cracking. Like this process is being, being going on and on and on. So, this is known as transcoding the information. So, uh, you keep on transcoding the information. You have your own views and you have your own ideas about what one particular thing that you are trying to evaluate then uh, uh, another skill that can be involved in reading is known as scanning that one we have already discussed thoroughly another skill that is skimming and then identifying the main points that three things we have discussed in the previous lecture that we did yesterday so uh, that was the was these were some of the skills which are involved when you are reading now, uh, while developing your reading skills, you are supposed to remember a few things that how to start with global understanding of text and afterwards move towards detailed understanding. Like, uh, for example, you are trying to build your confidence. Now, this confidence thing is really very important. It would develop awareness of how texts are organized. Now, it will also help you see that how these texts are encouraged and you are encouraged to find out what is there in the texts. So, uh, this global understanding of reading from the text and developing your reading skills has got uh, to make you confident, uh, to make you organized and to find out the, what is there in the text. Use authentic tests. Now, another best idea for uh, through which you can enhance your reading skill is to use the authentic texts. 
like uh, do not use those texts which do not carry the standard uh, grammatical language uh, that is uh, uh, very important for you know revealing uh, the thoughts to the next person do not separate reading comprehension from other skills such as writing listening and speaking so uh, your reading cannot occur in isolation you are supposed to combine or you are supposed to intermingle that literary skill with the other language skills which are speaking reading which are speaking listening and uh, writing present reading in is an active skill now uh, we say that these receptive skills like listening and reading they are not active uh, skills but uh, reading is an active skill like for example you are trying to guess guess what is going to come up next you are trying to predict that what is going to come up next checking asking questions responding to what is read now moving on to point number five that is give flexible and varied uh, exercises like for example you are going to give your students and you are going to help yourself see uh, different flexible and varied exercises then define the aim of exercise given now you are supposed to look into the instructions being provided clearly that I would make sure that I'm going to give you instructions clearly make a clear distinction between teaching and testing so this is what I am supposed to do for you now you are not being tested for every material Material that we are going to read, you are supposed to, you know, uh, uh, learn it by heart, and you are supposed to learn that how you are supposed to skim text, how you are supposed to scan text, how you are supposed to look for the main ideas, and so on and so forth. Now, what can we do in the classroom is really very important. Like, for example, you would encourage silent reading to develop efficient reading strategies. Uh, you would help yourself develop this habit of uh, doing the silent reading. Consider the text as a whole. So, you would consider the text as a whole. You would not see the different extracts in the classroom. Accompany pictures and diagrams. Make guesses that what is the text is about, who is it for, who wrote it, and who it appeared where it appeared skim through the text to see if you were right ask questions referring to the content of the text reread uh, the text and answer the questions being asked so these are some of the strategies that you can apply on the text then uh, uh, you should have time uh, to yourselves now uh, keep the record of the speed through which you are going and you are reading the text like for example you see uh, you note your time that I started off at 11 maybe and uh, there is a longer text and you see that how much time you have taken in reading paragraph number one how much time you have taken in reading paragraph number two now that reading doesn't has to do something with only reading uh, from the text it has something to do with understanding uh, while uh, you are reading from the text number three is encourage comparisons between different interpretations and discussions uh, silent reading followed by an individual activity comparisons in peers in groups and a general discussion involving the whole class so this is what we are going to practice thoroughly now there are some reading comprehension exercise types like first of all sensitizing develop strategies to cope with unfamiliar words and complex or obscure words for which I would share with you one uh, very good uh, book uh, which you can purchase or maybe I can you know just give it to you uh, in a DVD uh, what you can do is you can pick up different kinds of activities from that very DVD and you can help yourself solve those activities on your own inference uh, making use of syntax logical and cultural clues or to discover unknown elements understanding relations within the sentence train to look for the core of the sentences subject plus work linking sentences and idea recognizing um, connectors and uh, reference words so these are all the things that you are supposed to come across and you will come across in your reading comprehension improving reading space uh, now you would be given some passages to read and uh, you would divide your time accordingly for skimming and scanning, uh, you can apply different activities like uh, you can apply different strategies like predicting, predicting or guessing what is going to come next. So you can, uh, I can ask you that uh, I can give you one paragraph and I, s I will ask you that what is going to come next. Like uh, that happens in the short stories as well. Previewing specific reading uh, techniques using beyond the text information to find where the required information is likely to be. Anticipation, causing and expecting uh, expectation of the text. Skim and scanning from a general view of the whole text to the limited reading uh, of the text so these are uh, that one we have discussed in the previous lecture also in detail so um, uh, that is easy to understand while you are going through the slide 
how is the main idea or how the aim is being conveyed like the function of the text is why was it written so you are going to concentrate on this why thoroughly that why was is this written so you are basically looking for the purpose of the text organization of the text the pattern of the text was chosen to alter the matches so what pattern uh, uh, does uh, the text follow and what pattern does exactly the text conveys um, then the order of the elements in this sentence that is thematization uh, and how the themes are being presented in the text and how the elements are related to one another and how elements are being presented now understanding the meaning and content like using various types of questions now you can be asked or you can be uh, you can come across different kinds of questions that can help you develop your reading device exercises in which there is no simple obvious answer look for those exercises uh, for which you cannot develop uh, the uh, obvious answers uh, now uh, you should be involved in the reading process and devise activities which are natural to the text responding to a letter reacting to an advertisement and so on and so forth that we would do in our writing skills also assessing uh, the text like the ability to evaluate the text being aware of the writer's intention what is the writer's tone what is the language being used uh, discuss and judge the ideas being presented so these are uh, the things that you can do while reading out any text uh, discriminating from facts and opinions now this critical evaluation will also help you uh, see that how well you have read any text and how well you can respond to it now uh, this is your turn to try it uh, with your partner read the next story and draw a picture to represent each story part use uh, just the pictures to retell the story so uh, you are reading from uh, what you are exactly supposed to do is that i'll show you a text that we would do together now uh, for enhancing and for you know elaborating or for uh, making your reading habits more understandable what you can do is you can keep on practicing it with your partners now you are my partner i would read from the text and you would make the pictures on the piece of paper i would tell you the story and you would you know try to make that story on the piece of paper this is how i read from the text now the title of the story is contest uh, now uh, you cannot see anything but you are supposed to listen to what i am telling you and i am reading from the slide once upon a time the wind and the sun were having an argument about who was the stronger of the two i repeat once upon a time the wind and the sun were having an argument about who was the stronger of the two we must have a contest that is the only way we will ever know who is the stronger one said the sun i am ready for any contest which should, what should i be what it, should it be said the wind look at all these people in the city whichever of us can make all the people in the city take off their coats in the winner said the sun okay said the wind it is hardly a challenge but i will do it who should go first because i am so sure that i will win i will let you go first said the sun the sun hid behind a large fluffy cloud and wind uh, got to work his idea was to blow an icy blast that would blow the coats right off the people in the city the wind blew and blew and blew and the blast was coldest strongest blast that the people had ever felt instead of blowing the coats right off the people a strange thing happened the people wrapped their coats tightly around themselves the harder the wind blew the tighter the people wrapped their coats around them at last the exhausted wind came up gave up now it was time for the sun to give to uh, get to the work the sun came out from the behind the clouds and shone down on the city with his, with all his strength the people began to feel the warmth of the sun they loosened their coats the sun continued to shine with all his might the people grew warmer and warmer soon they were so warm they had they had to take their coats off so the sun won the contest he was indeed the stronger of the two so uh, that was the story i hope that you have made the uh, pictures for everyone the argument between sun and wind then the wind blowing so hard that the uh, people they had been or they wrapped their coats tighter around them then uh, uh, the uh, wind giving up then the sun coming in uh, people becoming warmer and warmer and then indeed uh, the sun won now let's see the display 
Here you are, an argument between sun and the wind uh, of uh, people taking off their coats. Wind blew harder and harder and sun blew harder and harder and sun it won the trophy. So this is what uh, exactly uh, where you were supposed to do in uh, while I'd been reading from the story. Now moving on to the next exercise, you are, what you are supposed to do is to, you would be given a time, one minute, to look at the picture and then I would ask you some question. This is reading from the pictures and reading from the diagrams. So are you ready? I'll show you the picture in, uh, for one minute and you would be, after that you would be asked to answer a few questions. Ready? One, two, three. Here you go. Your time is up. Now you would come across some of the questions that you would be required to answer. Question 1 is who was reading the newspaper? Who was reading the newspaper? Question number 2 is who was playing on the guitar? Judy or Luce? What was the waiter carrying in his hand? What was placed on the rightmost table? Who was talking on the phone? Did you help yourself see the answers? Now let's check the answers one by one. Who was reading the newspaper? Jim is reading the newspaper. Who was playing on the guitar? Judy was playing on the guitar. What was the waiter carrying in his hand? The waiter was carrying a tray with a cup in his hand. Who, who, what was placed on the rightmost table? There are some papers placed on the right table. Who was talking on the phone? Lucy was talking on the phone. So this is how you can read from the picture and then you, can, and you are supposed to check your memory uh, and answer a few questions on your own. Now here is a very interesting activity with the name Love Train. You would be asked to and you would be made to listen to one uh, comprehension passage of which you would be asked to you know answer a few uh, questions, uh, answer a few uh, things on your own, answer a few questions on your own rather. Let's clip on the link without wasting time. Now uh, the title of this uh, very comprehension is Love Train. Uh, you would come across some of the difficult words uh, that are there in within the paragraph that you would be asked to require to you know find the meaning of from within the passage and that we would do together. Now I would read from the paragraph and we would develop our reading skills. Here I begin. When I was very little I loved I loved for my mom to tell me stories about herself. No matter how tired she was, she never adumbrated them. She would fill the tales with the minutest, uh, minutest details and they were always fascinating. Another thing she did was tell the stories with such um, granticol. Then she would stop and say, now what do you think uh, that word means? I would try to piece together what was happening in the story and make my best guess. To this day, when I want to bug my friends, I use the huge words I first learned learning on mom's shoulders as she recounted a snippet of her life. My favorite story was the one about how, mom, how my mom met my dad. Now mom is telling the story to her daughter. I was 17 years old when I already knew the kind of a man I would marry. Take note. He would not be too garrulous. 
I tell you, Rosa, it's important for a man to take time to listen to what you have to say and never um, impertinent. I never forget what I was when I was 16. A boy, a boy from my church named Joe Turner came and knocked on our door. He did not look my mama in the eye and didn't say hello. He just leaned against the door jam and said, Rosa, here. My mama raised her bro and said, she is, but not for boys such as yourself. But I digress. I'm supposed to be telling you about the day I met your daddy, right? Okay, so I was riding the um, Amtrak train between uh, Providence and Prevalara during my fresh man near at Brown and the door at the end of my car rattled open. He was tall and swarthy. He wore a thick ivory cable knit sweater with a gray wool scarf wrapped firmly around his neck. I couldn't tell what his heritage was and that intrigued me. What was he, Indian, Portuguese or Peruvian? Mom would pause here and I would shout, Cape Verdean, she'd continue. Well, if I'd been shy, I might have just looked at the train window, but then where would I be now? You wouldn't even be here, so I let my eyes lock with, with his as he wobbled down the train, moving train. He smiled a slight smile, not a big one. His eyes raised just enough to let me know he has spotted me too. I always loved this line and would smile at the image of my dad stumbling down the train and then noticing my radiant mom. So Rosa, once we spotted each other, we da your dad found infinite reasons to walk past me to go to the cafe car. I was sitting by my myself along the aisle, so finally I just slid over the window leaving the seat next to me empty. Your dad came back with two cups of hot coca and sat down with a smile and we had the most delightful conversation. I would tell right then that this was no ephemeral crush. This was the real deal. I was doing to end up loving this man forever. Here comes the part of here comes the part I loved best about the story. We pull into the train station at Pilada and it's time for me to get off. He was heading to Washington where he was going to school. I prepared myself for some hackened expression as I got off the train. You know, great meeting you, or you are the apple of my eye. I also worried he might try to sneak a smooch, which would have been a big turn off. We'd just met. Instead, he took my hand gently and gave it a little squeeze. He said, if it's the tough, if it's the thought that counts, consider yourself kissed. Mama said she just about died when he said that. Then she said to herself, that man will be my husband. And so he is. So that's a beautiful story of love train where the husband and wife are meeting and uh, uh, the mother is telling the story uh, to her um, daughter. The name of the mother is Rosa. Now let's see the question and let's try to answer them one by one. Number one is, as used in the passage, what is the best antonym for Adam Bratted? Delighted, lengthened, invented, simplified, and understand. Now let's get back to the passage and let's see where was the word written. She never adumbrated them. That was about the stories. Now she never invented them, she never simplified them, she never understand them, she never detailed them, or she never lengthened them. Which one is the best answer? Option C. Alright, so that's option C. That is invented them because nothing was invented. Everything was so natural and so true. Alright. The, the question number two is, as used in the passage, what is the meaning of grandiloquence? Technical jargon, a racket speech, pity expression, pompous language, foreign word or a phrase. Which one is it? It's a technical jargon. What is ironic about the life of this passage? Rosa's mother does not like glitches. The passage has nothing to do with the song. It is where Rosa's mother meets her husband-to-be. The train only went a short distance, but their love was forever. Rosa's mother could not have possibly loved her father after such a short train ride.
you're supposed to answer it on your own. This is your question number three. I will ask you question number four. Why might the author have chosen Rosa as the narrator even though it is her mother who is telling the main story? A option is to make story harder to follow. B option is to make the story seem more straightforward. A C option is to make it clear that Rosa's mother has passed away. D option is to make it clear that the story happened a long time ago. And E option is so that the reader could learn the story from Rosa's perspective. I think it's option E. Question number five is, as used in the passage, what is the meaning of garrulous? A. Conceited. B. Lacuous. C. Narrow-minded. D. Obsequious. E. Patronizing. Question number six is, which bit situation describes someone who has been impertinent? A. A man crashes into a car in front of him. B. A student gestures rudely to his teacher. C. A child rushes out the door forgetting to say goodbye to his mom. D. A woman refuses to let her son play video games before school. E. A dog chases all the cats in the neighborhood. Question number seven is, which is the best antonym for digress? digress? A. Stop. B. Stray. C. Shorten. D. Remember. E. Stay on course. Question number 8 is, what may Rosa be meaning to convey to her child by telling this story? A. Advice on what to look for in a partner. B. A regret that she met her husband on a train. C. The suggestion that Rosa might find her husband on a train. D. A yearning to go back to the time and place. E. The idea that education should be before marriage. I think it's option A. Question number 9 is, judging from the passage, what does Rosa's mother find most important in the husband? A. Humor. B. Politeness. C. Originality. D. Respectfulness. E. Heroism. Question number 10 is, what is implied in the following paragraph? Well, if I had been shy, I might just, I might have just looked out the train window. Where would I be now? You wouldn't be here. So I let my eyes lock with his as he wob wobbled down, then moved the train. A. That Rosa really wanted to just look out the window. B. That it is best to be outspoken in all circumstances. C. That as soon as they locked eyes, they fell in love. D. That a slight change in the circumstances could have greatly altered her life. E. That the story took place before technology allowed trains to offer a smooth ride. Question number 11 is, as used in the passage, what is the meaning of ephemeral? A. Fleeting. B. Permanent. C. Ridiculous. D. Serious. E. Young. Question number 12 is, what is the best antonym of hackant? A. Happy. B. Humorous. C. Original. D. Overused. E. Turbulent. Do you like this story? What is your favorite part? What is your least favorite part? What could you do to make it better? So uh, you can give your ideas here in this box. You would give this uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, this handout uh, with you uh, in the same DVD. What you can do is you can solve it later. Uh, we have a lot more to go and we have a lot more of the paragraphs to come across. Let's move quickly. The next activity is the remains of marriage. Now let's click on that and let's try to see what's in it. Remains of marriage. Now I would read it quickly and you are supposed to grasp the story quickly. Leave it. Cecily could begin to fathom what she was hearing. In fact, a part of her began to feel she was in some sort of dream, unable to emerge to wakefulness. wakefulness. Even the contractor appeared flabbergasted. His mouth stayed in a half-open position like a marionette waiting for its strings to be tugged. Yes, leave it, Robert said again. He was speaking to the notion that someone in the room had asked him to clarify his work. 
No one had, but Robert had understood the silence. What were the chances that an Indian burial ground would be found on the Bukolis site where Robert and Kessele had chosen to build their dream home? Why is the world would Robert not want to have the remains carted away, thought Kessele. The last thing they needed were Indian uh, poltergeists meandering around their home while the two of them were trying to renovate their marriage. Kesley, usually deferential to her husband, knew that now was the time to make her position heard. She tried to cajole Robert from the direction he was heading, sweetheart. She went. She don't want to build an aside with human remains. It would be in irrelevant to the death. Immediately, she saw contempt in Robert's eyes. It was a subtle reminder of how he often viewed her as superficial and self-absorbed. What would be irrelevant, said Robert, his voice dripping with condensation, would be discreet that these uh, native graves and more than uh, from their final resting place, remember the culture? No, Kesley didn't, did not remember the culture. She could care less about the culture. However, Robert, the history professor, was obviously enthralled by the contractor's findings. He had an innate way of understanding others' culture and other people that amazed Kesley. He did not have that gift with her. But something inside Kesley said that this was too much. She believed wholeheartedly in ghosts and could not imagine the life of them haunting her, rattling her cupboards and shaking her floorboards. Kesley had an unnerving sensation that the big problems were ahead. That was a kind of a scary story. Now let's read the questions. Question number one is, why can't Kesley fathom what her husband says at the beginning of the passage? She could not hear what Robert said. She could not believe what he said. She had not yet seen the remains. She could not think of the retort to his commitment. The answer is option B. Question number two is, which is the best synonym for flabbergasted? Option A is dumbfounded, B option is intuitive, C option is curious, D option is tactful. The right option is D. Question number three is, what is the term given to the comparison of the contractor to a maroniate? That's an illusion, meaning a figure of a speech, making casual reference to literary figure. That's an analogy, meaning extended comparison, showing the similarities between things. That's a denotation, meaning the literal definition of a word. A hyperbole, meaning a gross exaggeration. That's an illusion. Question number four is, he was speaking to the notion that someone in the room had asked him to clarify his words. A. He was speaking as if he had asked himself to clarify his word. He was speaking as if the contractor or Kesley had asked him to clarify his words. He was speaking as if he heard a question but was not sure who asked it. He was speaking as if a ghost in the room had asked him to clarify his word. The answer is, answer is option A. Question number five is, why is it the title of the passage ironic? Nothing remains of the marriage. It is not clear Robert and Kesley are married. Remains have been found on the property. Kesley and Robert are having trouble with their marriage. Answer is option A. What can be the said about the house Robert and Kesley are planning to build? A option is it will be haunted. B option is it will be in the city. C option is Kesley considered it their dream house. D option is it will be in the country. The right option is A. Question number seven is if Kesley had chosen to be deferential to her husband, what would she have most likely said? A. Good idea. B. Don't be silly. C. I leave you. D. I love you. Option is B. Question 8 is, she tried to cajole Robert from the direction he was heading. A. He tried, uh, she tried to compromise with Robert. B. She tried to force Robert from the direction he was heading. C. She tried to gently probe Robert from the direction he was heading. D. She tried to give Robert real threats about the direction he was heading.
the option right answer is C question number 9 is which is the best antonym for discreet a honor B excavate C defile D criticize a the option is a tenth question is what does the reader learn about Kesley and Robert's marriage a it seems busy B it seems blissful C it seems strained D it seems good-natured the answer is option C question number 11 is what about Robert seems to keep him from wanting to move the grave site a he is controlling B he fears the Indians C he cares about history D he doesn't want to build a house the answer is option C do you think Robert and Kesley should build a burial uh, should build on the burial ground explain so this is uh, what you are supposed to do uh, in this exercise number two now let's move on to the next exercise that is going to be your quiz number two of the whole series of uh, your semester uh, you are supposed to read from this comprehension and then you are supposed to write down your answers um, by you know solving all the MCQs as we have done just right now let's without wasting time let's click on the link now I would read the whole paragraph for your uh, convenience once and then what you would be required to do is to uh, uh, solve it on your own all right now let's read from the slide this is an excerpt is taken from the novel uh, mr. Haring now an old man has lost his position as a warden of the hospital for old men he has just come for an unsuccessful interview with mr. slope concerning his reappointment to the position I will read from the passage and then I would ask you some questions that you would be required to answer in the end that is your quiz number two so let's begin mr. Haring was not a happy man as he walked down the palace pathway and stepped out into the close his position in pleasant house were a second time gone from him but that he could endure he had been schooled and in schooled and insulted by a man young enough to be his son but that he could put it up with he could even draw from the very injuries which had been inflicted uh, on him some of that consolation which we may believe martyrs always receive from the injustice of their own sufferings he had admitted to his daughter that he wanted to comfort of his old home and yet the, he could have returned to his lodgings in the high street if not with exhaustion at least with satisfaction had that been all but the venom of the chaplain's hymen had worked in the, his blood and snap and sapped the life of his sweet contentment new men are carrying out new uh, mayors and are carting away the useless rubbish of past centuries what cruel words these had been and how often are they now used uh, with all the heartless cruelty of the slope a man is sufficiently condemned if it can only be shown that either in politics or religion he does not belong to some new school established within the last score of years he may then regard himself as rubbish and expected to be carted away a man is nothing now unless he has within him a full appreciation of the new era an era in which it would seem that neither honesty nor truth is very desirable but in which success is the only touchstone of merit we must laugh at everything that is established let the joke be ever so bad ever so untrue to the real principles of joking nevertheless we must laugh or else beware the crat be caught we must talk think and live up the spirit of the times or else we are not now new men and new mayors long credits and few sculptures great success or wonderful ruin such are now the tastes tastes of Englishmen who know how to live alas alas under such circumstances mr. Haring could not but feel that he was an Englishman who did not know how to live this new doctrine of mr. slope and rubbish cart sadly disturbed his equanimity the same thing is going on throughout the whole country work is now required from every man who receives wages and had been um, had he been living all his life receiving wages and doing no work had he 
in truth so lived as to be now in his old age just reckoned and rubbish fit only to be hidden away in some huge dust hole the school of men to whom the professors belong the grandchildren and grams are affiliated with no such self acquisitions as these which trouble mr harding they as a rule are satisfied with the wisdom of propriety in their own uh, conducted as can be as any mr slope or any bishop with his own but unfortunately for himself mr harding had little of this self reliance which he heard himself designated as rubbish by the slope of world he had no other resources than to make inquiry within his own bosom as the truth of the destination alas alas the evidence seemed generally to go against him so it was adopted from the warden anthony tropel here are questions that you are supposed to answer question number 1 is the main cause of mr harding's unhappiness as he leaves the bishop's place is a the loss of his house b the loss of his position c the need to live with his daughter d the thought provoking words of the chaplain e the injustice he has suffered question number 2 is it can be inferred that slope is a the chaplain b the bishop c a foreigner d a politician e a young writer question number 3 is the word equanimity most nearly means a status b happiness c justice d complacency c composure Question number 4 is it can be inferred that Mr Harding is especially disturbed because he a option is does not feel himself to be old b is offended by the young men's impertinence c believes no one else feel as he does d believes his work must has been worthwhile e feels there may be some truth in regarding himself as rubbish Question number 5 is Mr Harding differs from others of his school because they a option is do not believe slope b have never been called rubbish c are sure their conduct is irreproach, irre, irreproachable d have already examined their conciseness e feel that Mr Harding is not one of them Question number 6 is the tone of the sentence new man live is objective b ironic d c derogatory d expository e ambivalent Question number 7 is the first two sentences of the paragraph 3 relate to a words of mr slope b thoughts of mr harding c view of the old school men d view point of the author e opinions of all young men so that was your reading comprehension quiz i hope that you are going to do it better after reading and rereading the text again and again uh, this is the activity number 4 that one you can do on your own the name of the uh, again a uh, selected uh, uh, paragraph for the reading comprehension is dreams it brings us to today's lecture uh, that is about uh, reading skills uh, now basically reading or once you talk about reading a uh, reading is a constant process of guessing the so more more you would read the more you would be able to guess that what is going to come up next uh, what one brings to the text is often more important than what one finds in it so uh, what the reader finds is more important than what writer is actually writing about you must learn to use understand to unknown elements in the paragraph so keep reading 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 and reading uh, read many more material as you can we have shared the list of uh, things from where you can enhance your reading and you can improve your reading we have also solved some exercises and i hope that you are going to solve your quiz number 2 better uh, we will see uh, and we will meet in the next class again we will discuss some other things which are related to the language skills uh, till then take very good care of yourself i'll see you again allah hafiz